Dauntless is growing. But not just in popularity, but in its world, its lore, and its characters. And it's this wide variety of colourful characters which help guide us and educate us. From blacksmiths to ethersmiths, from retired slayers to far slayers, this video attempts to highlight and elaborate many of the various NPCs which surround us in the Shattered Isles, some new and some old, some interesting and some not so interesting. Dauntless really does have them all. So without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, I'll need to say that this video doesn't include some fan favourites such as Zelia Farslayer and Linnea Silver, because both of these characters have an entire video to themselves. I'll leave a link in the description to both of them below. The first character we'll look at is arguably one of the most impactful and recognisable. Arkan Drew, the respected Ethersmith of Ramsgate, was born in St Avelaine to upper class parents. A bright child with an instinct for ether, his family allowed him to join the scholars of the orrery when he was invited on his 10th birthday. Hoping to avoid the dull life of academia, Arkan plunged into the growing field of etheric engineering. It was there he learned respect for ether and all it can do. Unlike many of his fellow scholars, he has abandoned any pretense of strict observation and instead works directly to aid slayers with etheric technology. Crafting powerful lanterns that slayers can use for many seemingly magical purposes, from enhancing their combat abilities to allowing long-range radio communications, the Ethersmith has proven an integral resource for Ramsgate's slayers. Arkin Drew has been Ramsgate's Ethersmith for as long as anyone can remember, including Kat Sorrell. He is always happy to talk with someone who shares his abiding interest in ether, where it comes from, how it interacts with the world, and how it may be used to build wondrous new devices like his lanterns. Whenever dealing with slayers in Ramsgate, Arkan offers his help with a twinkle in his eye, a thirst for knowledge in his heart, and a minimum of lengthy explanations, even if he doesn't always manage that last part. Bulvar Rosk like Kat Sorrell, has retired from active Slayer duty. And unlike Kat, who has always used Ramsgate as her home base, Rosk spends much of his life wandering the Shattered Isles to learn everything he could about the weapons of the Slayer. Now that he too has chosen to remain in the city long term, he's dedicated his free time to helping his friend's former shipmate train the many Slayers who have come to the city seeking quick route to the front lines of the fight. Rosk is no drill sergeant, he prefers a more friendly, even jovial approach to instruction. But he also demands serious dedication to fight and craft, and is always ready to offer a lesson or two. Bulvar trained with the famous slayer Kat Sorrell some years ago, and quickly went on to forge a powerful reputation as a slayer hunting down the largest and most dangerous behemoths. But he soon saw how wealthy mercenaries could become, and left the life of a trained champion to form his own company of slayers for hire, the Crimson Blades. Bulvar cannily negotiated the prospective employers and took on a larger than life persona to overcome some of the prejudices he ran up against from those who thought of mercenaries as dangerously untrained. Though some might use a huge persona to cover up deep seated insecurities, Bulvar Rosk is exactly that. A supremely confident alpha male who's very used to winning being in charge and getting his way. The thing is, he's actually as good as he thinks he is. Rosk is personally brave and would face down the most massive behemoth without twitching. And he'll also tell you all about why that makes him the greatest who ever lived. He's not a bully, he's just bullish on Bulvar. Kat Sorrell was born to pioneering parents who died saving her from the destruction of their frontier island home. A dark, driving memory she shares with only a few close friends. Kat was forced to raise herself. The hardships of her childhood forced Kat to prove her worth amid the toughs and beggars of the Ramsgate streets, and she soon learned that she was a natural fighter, but hunting behemoths was her calling. Before the injuries that forced her into retirement, Kat lives 
to destroy behemoths like those that killed her family in a hope that no other family has to go through the same experiences. Kat is well known just not as a slayer, but as a trainer of slayers whose students often go on to be amongst the greatest to follow her path. She trains a single apprentice at a time, taking the time to instil each with all her years of experience and skill. Outwardly gruff and no nonsense, but sometimes lets her guard down to reveal a sense of humour with those she trusts. She has little patience for time wasters and takes training apprentice slayers very seriously. Initially players will find that Kat is a source of inspiration and knowledge, a trusted mentor more than a parental substitute who can crack wise with trusted subordinates, but also command immediate attention and snap into a serious professional demeanour in an instant. After she retires though, these qualities will be tempered a bit by drink and frustration at being grounded, but they're still the core of who Kat is. A privileged upbringing and an extensive classical education have left Gaius Copperwheel a genius level graduate of the University of St Aveline, but with little practical understanding of people in society. But he does have an abiding love of the world and its wonders coupled with a desire to make others see its dangers too. He's often been a bearer of ill tidings while tracking the unsettling atmosphere phenomena called dreadstorms. He commissioned a ship to carry him to an island near a path of an approaching dreadstorm to make further observations, but the ship crashed and only Gaius survived. Gaius was left in room for several months before he was found and his mind still hasn't quite recovered from the isolation. He talks to himself frequently and often has extensive conversations in that regard. Quick and perceptive but lacking wisdom, he has a naturally inquisitive character that delights in observing and understanding the world around him. Refined sensibilities, slight pretensions and a sheltered upbringing give him his accent and proper way of speaking, but he is hardier than he appears. Still surviving alone for months on an island made him a little nuts. While not physically brave, he will always stand up to ignorance with a martyr zeal, refusing to, to back down from the facts he knows to be true. Gregario Flint was born in Gregory Stone to a poor family who dwelled on the seedier side of St Aveline. Growing up in near poverty and surrounded by the nasty smells of the street, young Gregory found escape watching the well-dressed and wealthy from all over the Shattered Isles moving through the busy port. When he discovered he had a knack for sewing and visual design, he began to create his own styles using scrap materials nicked from cargo ships. His work was so well received that he soon purchased his family's way out of poverty. He trained himself to speak with a cultured accent of the upper classes, and as soon as he was able to begin work for the finest materials and artists, within years he became the ultimate arbiter of style amongst the well-to-do classes of his home city and earned a not-so-small fortune in doing so. But Gregario never forgot where he came from, or what drove him to rise up from the gulf of gutters. He wanted to share what he had achieved, so that others could feel as good about themselves as they deserved. Not content to rest on his well-defined laurels, he saw the condition and look of those who ventured forth to settle on the frontier and slay the behemoths that hunted there, and decided there was no reason they couldn't look good while doing so. He sold his holdings in St Aveline and purchased a fine airship with a finer crew and established a new base of operations in the thriving Ramsgate. Gregario was saturated in style and sophistication. He's the ultimate arbiter of taste, but not arrogant or dismissive of those many who would consider unfashionable. Rather, he simply knows that he knows best. And if others don't agree, well that's their loss. He has a strong recommendation and the attitude of a style mentor, taking great joy in helping others determine what is their style is. He will not give up on the challenge, and always finds a way to make things work. Perfect posture, impeccably dressed, dry humour. Horatio Gallifar learned his craft as an apprentice to the first designers of the then new airships that fully exploited ether technology. He has therefore been building and designing airships for virtually his whole life and has mastered the craft decades ago. 
Demand for airships is now at an all-time high and Horatio is always working flat out. However, he'll always make room to work on Slayer vessels, as he's a long-time admirer of them. Horatio is sharply intelligent and deeply in love with airships, their design, their construction, and every aspect of their function. He's eager to share his passion with others and has numerous apprentices in his thriving shipyard. Metin Lysandria is descended from generations of watchers that can trace their lineage back to the earliest days of the islands. Long before the first explorer began to chart the world's floating landmasses, when the orrery was truly the sole source of knowledge for the survivors of the upheaval. And until recently, the watchers of the orrery have shown little interest in matters outside their own areas of study, collecting the history of the world and preserving what knowledge they could. Lysandria is a politician first and an academic second. She has a quick opportunistic mind which runs along conservative lines of maintaining the status quo. She has little time for slayers and wayfinders but has recently come to the conclusion that some influence over both groups will be essential for maintaining the Watcher's prestige in the long term. She's also pompous and dislikes close proximity or physical contact and is convinced she's cleverer than everyone else and she's usually right. Lady Luck, also known as the Corsair Queen, is responsible for gathering the behemoths to the trial fields. She's a captain of the Corsair ship, the Fortunate Soul, and a commodore of a modest pirate fleet she calls the Storm Chasers. She's also the master of ceremonies for the Island of Trials, a competitive battleground where slayers can prove themselves against some of the most difficult hunts in the Shattered Isles. She's never told anyone even our most trusted crew, how she learned of the arachnite-rich rock which became the Isles of the Trials. But when Lady Luck returned from a solo recon flight, it was noticed that one of her eyes had been replaced with a sphere of pure blue arachnite. After she tossed the first corsair to ask about the eye over the side, the other storm chasers learned to embrace the mystery. The Sima Moss is a professional wayfinder that encompasses the role of navigator, helmsman, and lookout. He has studied airship piloting and navigation at the University of St. Avaline and has eschewed safer jobs aboard commercial ships for finding adventure with slayers. The Sima is egotistical, but good-natured, a little too fond of the ball and prone to tell eyebrow-raising stories of air shows and turbulent reefs. He thrives on danger of life on a slayer's airship over the safe pedestrian work he'd get aboard a large transport vessel or slow floating pleasure cruiser. A born gambler, he believes that somewhere in the skies his fortune is waiting and he only needs a good enough ship with a brave enough captain to find it. Honest Dawes is an energetic and enthusiastic young trader of rare and interesting items from all over the Shard Isles. Oz loves nothing more than sharing and selling his amazing finds. He is also an avid student of cultures all over the world and knows that spreading and celebrating diverse cultural events really draws out the enthusiasts who might want to trade for his wonderful goods. And if tinkering with those goods to make them even better helps pay the bills, he's all too happy to do it. No one really knows where Honest Oz came from and he would rather not declare his true age. Though he appears to be around 17 to 20 years old, he himself has told many different versions of his origin story. He was a stowaway on an Austrian freight hauler, or a plucky child who raised himself after a terrible behemoth attack orphaned him. Perhaps all of these stories have somewhat of truth about them, but Honest Oz isn't inclined to tell. Whatever his origins, he's on his own. He is able to travel all over the Shattered Isles and live to tell the tale and has proven to be a prodigy of tinkering, creating, curating and trading. And since he's learned that the best time to do business is when a celebration event is going on, Honest Oz always makes sure he's on hand to join in the festivities. Marcus Bohr hails from one of the most populous and wealthy cities towards the centre of the Shard Isles, but he spurned his inheritance to become a slayer. He trained alongside Kat Sorrell, but was injured by their quarry and only Kat's slaying prowess saved them. And when their skyship subsequently wrecked upon the cliffs attempting to rescue them, Marcus was able to return the favour. Realising there was still enough of their vessel left to get them home, barely, he led the remaining crew in a desperate repair effort that succeeded against all odds. 
It was this event that made Marcus recognise he was more suited to sailing the skies than slaying behemoths. He became one of the best bosuns in the air, and joined Cat's crew as soon as his old friend took command of her own ship. Intelligent and easy going, which makes him great at figuring out the most efficient ways to get things done with often limited resources. Generally welcoming to newcomers, but maintains a strict mental division between capable experienced crew and inexperienced islanders. He is fiercely loyal to his ship and the captain who commands her, whomever that may be. That doesn't mean he won't point out when he thinks they're endangering themselves, the crew or the ship itself though. In game, Marcus becomes a figurative big brother after Kat is injured. Where Kat taught the player how to hunt, prey, wield a weapon and defeat behemoths, Marcus explains how a player does the job. He teaches a player how to take contracts and what equipment and crew are required to do the work, yet still offers his confidence in the player's ability to figure it all out. He's sure the player will be at least half as good as Kat is slaying, eventually. The Scarred Master came to Ramsgate after having received a message from Kat about needing the Adamant Fist to help them fight the behemoths. Their temple was destroyed by the Skyquake and needed a new place to stay. Working alongside the Aethersmith, they were able to create a new weapon, Aether Strikers. The Aether Strikers were the finished product created from the gauntlet that the Scarred Master gave to Kat Sorel, as a gift before Kat departed the Adamant Temple. The temple was home to a group of monks that trained in the art of pure hand-to-hand -hand etheric combat, an art used to defeat your foe by channeling Aether through the very souls into their deadly hands. They were formidable, and Kat Sorel was amongst them while she was studying their fighting styles. Following the event of the Skyquake, the temple was destroyed, and all but seven of the Adamant Fists survived, including the Scarred Master. Mysterious, masked, and in the market for anything, the middleman has long plied the people of Ramsgate with irresistible self-fusion opportunities, but little else is known about this enigmatic merchant. He is believed to hail from Ostia, the most advanced, industrialised and civilised in the Shard Isles, where he learned the value of trading in anything and everything on the black market. He has opened in the city of Ramsgate for many years, yet only the regent claims to have ever seen his face. Perhaps the greatest mystery surrounding the middleman, besides his true origin, his appearance, gender, intentions, age and so on, is how he is able to carry his stock with him wherever he goes. Some believe he doesn't, that he simply knows what people will want to trade so brings what he needs. Whatever the truth about his methods are, the middleman always seems to have just the sale you need, and sometimes even at a price that you want. Moira Hagesgetter. She may seem young to be running one of the most important businesses in Ramsgate, but she carries strong armour smithing genes on her mother's side. Her mother Varya started forging armour for slayers before even Kat Sorel took up the blade, and she encouraged Moira to start helping out with the smith when she was only five years old. Moira cherishes the memory, like all the ones of her time her mother was alive. Faria was taken from her daughter by a slow and painful illness when Moira was just a teenager. And even before her mother passed away, Faria's daughter had to deal with her unexpected grief while taking up the hammer and tongs to keep Hegsketter Smithy going. When she officially took over the smithy for her own, Moira kept the business thriving thanks to the community that took care of their own. Weaponsmith Wills Borman also helped young Moira with supplies and funding after Varya passed. Within a few years, the daughter's reputation was equal to that of her mother's. Her smithy and workshop in Ramsgate often displays new creations in various states of progress, a wonderland of organised chaos. Moira frequently delves into her mother's design notebooks, which include many schematics Varya was never able to create. Moira is loyal above all to three things, her mother's memory, her city, and her friends. And while she can be a crafty negotiator when she wants to be, when working with slayers, she always offers the best deal she can. Granny Strega is a wandering tonic maker, purveyor of pylons, and all-round alchemist extraordinaire. A relatively new arrival in Ramsgate, but an almost mythic presence in the skyports of the Shard Isles. Her skills and creativity are legendary, and if she does a little controversial research in on the side for her own purposes, who would question such a generous soul? Some say Strego is a loyal alchemist in Andar, banished for poisoning a wicked but untouchable noble, 
Others claim she saw her teaching alchemy at the orrery before she was thrown out for delving into forbidden subjects. Most seem to believe that Granny Streger may not be telling the truth about everything. It might even be a rank fraud wearing unseen cult insignia for promotional purposes. But as long as her cures work, then they aren't complaining. Granny Streger herself isn't one to delve into all that, though she's happy to share stories about her personal past that might even be true, especially tales of the many spouses who seem to have met their unfortunate ends through no proven fault of Streger's. And as for her believed connection to the unseen cult, she usually dodges questions with a sly wink or a change of the subject. If she is part of the cult, it could explain her regular supply line of rare and strange alchemical recipes, but it's just as likely the symbols are simple marketing. And that's the alchemist Granny Strega understands best of all. Wills Borman is the younger brother of Gulaf Borman, a wealthy merchant from a welfare merchant family back in Austria, a family that helped fund the founding of Ramsgate as a business opportunity. The family sent Wills to Ramsgate to run the most profitable part of the business, weaponsmithing. Wills is blatantly partisan towards Austria and frequently extols the virtues and superiority of his home, but in an agreeable way. Voluble and friendly to customers, but steely hard when it comes to negotiations and rivalries. His virtual monopoly of the weapons market gives him a lot of leverage and he is not afraid to use it, including making threats, not above a little light organised crime either. And finally, Dr Shade Priyani. Now she is the founder and the dean of the Orrery School of Behemoth Studies. She has dedicated her life to understanding what makes behemoths tick, from their physiology, to their life cycles, to their very origins but not out of sympathy for the creatures after losing her wife to a behemoth attack. The doctor studies behemoths only to better learn how to destroy them and share that knowledge with every slayer in the Shattered Isles. When she was young, she was by all accounts a happy individual with an optimistic outlook, but she has grown more and more driven in her self-appointed mission. That doesn't mean she has lost her drive or her sense of humour, but both have taken a dark turn she knows that revenge is the least scientific response one could have under the circumstances, but it provides powerful motivation, and for now, that's enough. As etheric events have grown more dire in the maelstrom, the Doctor has taken the opportunity to return to the field for some personal research. The hypercharged islands emerging from the massive storm bring strange behemoths, few if any have seen before, and she is determined these deadly new species won't take hold of the Shattered Isles. This is not to say she's taking up the blade of the Slayer, but she is intensifying her work with Kat Sorel and the Slayers of Ramsgate to meet the escalating challenge. There's something about the world, the lore, and the people of the Shattered Isles that keeps bringing me back to this game. Perhaps the cartoonish art style is enough to deter many non-players, or casual players. But I find that this is a really in-depth, expanding world which is constantly being added to by developers that really seem to enjoy what they're doing. Whether you enjoy exploding, or finding lore locations, or battling behemoths, or becoming unstoppable through countless skills and attributes, Dauntless can certainly be quite addictive. And I think with this video, I've tried to share another reason as to why that might be through all these various characters. But I think that'll about do for today. If you have a favourite Dauntless character, or if you have an idea for a character or race that you would like to see in-game, then please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. This video took quite a bit of research and time to put together, so any feedback, any advice would be greatly appreciated. And until next time, see you later.